What's up, tribe? You know what today is? Today is February the 1st, and you know what happens in February? We all of a sudden remember that black people have history. Child, anyway. So I decided that I'm going to be dropping on this channel, because this is my other channel, some black history nuggets and little something-somethings for us to talk about. So today being February the 1st, I thought it'd only be apropos that we start with the Greensboro sit-ins that took place um, February 1st. Um, through 1960. So here's the thing. I'm going to tell you guys the story behind the story. Because a lot of you are probably sitting here going, well, I know the story of the Greensboro uh, 4. I know exactly what happened. I know how it went down. You know one version. Let me give y'all the whole version of the story. As a proud graduate of Bennett College in Greensboro, North Carolina, I have to give you the story that includes my alma mater and the women who participated, including someone that I'm very close to, okay? She was actually given an award a few years ago for her um, for her participation in the Greensboro Citizens. And because of her, I was able to meet uh, two, three of the Greensboro Four. I met three of the Greensboro Four. Two are still living today, but at the time, I met three of them, okay? I'm proud of that, okay? Now, in the fall of 1959, the NAACP started meeting with students to try to um, plan, they were planning the sit-ins. This wasn't something that was just invented, it fell out the sky. They were actually planning this protest. And they started planning it in fall of 1959. And where were they meeting to make these plans in the fall of 1959? Bennett College. Why were they meeting at Bennett College, you say? They were meeting at Bennett College because Bennett is a private school. State School of North Carolina a &T. Now, students from a and and the other neighboring colleges came to Bennett. It wasn't like a Bennett thing, but the meetings took place at Bennett because it was a private school and they couldn't run, they couldn't, uh, they wouldn't run into the risk of losing funding or the school being shut down or other types of, you know, retaliatory things that were happening, okay? Um, so the plans kept getting pushed back for different reasons, right? Oh, we can't do it because of midterms. Oh, we can't do it because kids are going home for Christmas. And when they got home for Christmas, oh, well, let's wait until the spring because it's cold right now. These four young men um, that went on to become the Greensboro Four, they got very frustrated with this. They got very frustrated with the idea of why do we keep putting this off? They keep coming up with reasons for us not to do this, and we're ready to do it, and we're ready to do it now. So I'm going to make sure I'm giving y'all the correct information. Um, David Richmond, Franklin McCain, Easy, 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 sorry y'all, Blair, and Joseph McNeil, um, the, with the four young men, they were meeting in their dorm room one night, they got real frustrated, they decided, you know what, we're gonna make this happen. So, um, the next day they got dressed up, right, they put on their Sunday's best, um, Joseph Mc, was a Franklin McCain put on his uh, military uniform. He was in the reserves. He put on his military uniform. And they walked to Woolworths, which is in downtown Greensboro. Now, if you live in Greensboro or you've been in Greensboro, you know that from North Carolina Ante to the Woolworths, it's not a long walk, right? It's a decent walk. So they walked to the Woolworths, and they first they purchased something because they said, we're not going to let them deny us because they're going to say, well, you're not a, you're not a customer. So they first they purchased something and they had their receipts in their bag. Then they went to the lunch counter where they proceeded to sit down to order something to eat. Okay. That was the first day of the sit-ins. The sit-ins lasted until July. Okay. Again, I don't want history to give y'all this whitewash version that they went down there and everybody kumbaya and then two days later, two weeks later, hell, even two months later, then they were able to sit down and have a hot dog. Not so much, okay? Um, and what ended up happening was when that day they, they sat there and then the police came and the police basically was like, look, can y'all just go so we don't have to cause a problem? And they did leave without being arrested that first day but they came back the next day and when they came back the next day word has spread about what happened and so now you had students those two same students that had been a part of the planning they came back um including the women from bennett college and what happened was the men went in first and when the men were arrested because they were arrested this time 
And when the men were arrested, then the women sat down at the seat. The women from Bennett College sat down at the seat. And this continued again to go on and on and on and on for months and months and months and months. And like I said, the um, boycott was not over until July, June. I want to make sure I got it. July 25th. And when and the, of course, the first people that were able to sit down and get a meal were the Greensboro Four. And they said that the food wasn't even that good. <laughs> um, but um, you guys, there's there are plenty, plenty, plenty of... Uh, there's plenty of information out there, including the information about uh, Bennett College's role. For a long time, our role was not necessarily included in the story, but there are stories out there where you can find out and get the whole the whole breakdown of our, our part of it. Um, and I'm very proud of that, um, being a graduate of Bennett College and also being a black woman. I'm proud of the fact that black women, I think you guys need to know that black women were very much a part of the civil rights movement on all levels. Um, but just like everything else, you know, in our society, we live in a very patriarchal society. And so it's going to lean towards the male versions of the story. What I want to let you guys know is that the Greensboro, and that's not to take anything away from the Greensboro Four. They were the first. They did put themselves on the line. They went down there by themselves. Like, that's not to take anything away from their story, okay? I don't want anybody getting in my comments. I don't want no Aggies down in my comments getting mad at me. But I just, listen, I'm going to rap, okay? But please understand that the McGurman... Not the Montgomery, nothing. The Greensboro sit-ins, it did spark a movement across the South where sit-ins, um, they started having sit-ins all over the South as a result of this. It also was the catalyst for the formation of the Student Nonviolent, Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, also known as SNCC, all right? Um, as a Bennett College student, um, they actually were closing the Woolworths when I was living in Greensboro. Um, and I was able to sit at the counter and order um, a hot dog and a soda, and they actually had the prices the same as they were the day that, uh, you know, February 1st, 1960, and they actually had some of the same waitresses who were there that day, and it, were, it was a black woman there, and it was a white woman there, and we were able to actually sit down and have a conversation with them and talk to them about their experiences on that day and how they felt and what they were thinking and what they did and did not do. So, um... I'm just proud of all of that. And so I figured I would start off my first day of Black History Month with that little tidbit. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in those comments. Peace.